Hi, I'm Judy Murray. I'm a tennis coach. I'm a former British women's team captain and I'm mum to two Grand Slam champions, Jamie and Andy. And I'm going to show you a number of fun exercises that you can do at home using household objects and play equipment to develop the skills that you need to be able to play tennis. Here's a series of fun warm-up exercises that will get you used to handling the tennis racket while you're on the move. Don't worry if you don't have a tennis racket, you could use any of these things. There's the inside of a kitchen roll, there's a badminton racket, there's a stick, uh, there's the inside of a sheet of wrapping paper, there's a little play bat, there's a rubberized exercise stick, there's a wooden spoon taped onto the back of a paper plate, and then there's a mini tennis racket. Number one, passing the racket round your back. It's important to pass it to the right and to the left because tennis is a two-sided sport. We need left and right sides to have really good coordination. Number two, passing the racket from side to side through your legs because in tennis, your arms and legs have to move at the same time. Number three, Hold the racket at shoulder height and let it drop. Catch it at different heights. Start easy, catch it with both hands, palms open, close to your shoulders or close to where you drop it. And then try dropping it to your tummy and catch it, your knees and catch it, and then your ankles and catch it. For our next set of exercises, we're going to learn how to control the head of the racket. So I'm going to use a racket and a bean bag, but you could just as easily use a Tupperware lid and a rolled up pair of socks. Start simple and bump the bean bag up close to you. Then you can get higher and higher. Here's a really important tip for doing this racket and bean bag exercise, and that is that your nails are to the sky when you start and the racket is flat like a tray, because if it's not, the bean bag will fall off. Flat like a tray, flat like a tray. To challenge yourself, clap, then trap. Or flip the racket head to catch on the opposite side. That's a bit like changing from a forehand to a backhand in tennis. And if you're getting really adventurous, you could try and catch the beanbag behind your back. To be able to play tennis, you have to be able to throw and catch a bouncing ball, and you have to be able to move to and from a bouncing ball. So here's a little exercise that you can do at home. I use a hoop because I like to have a target area. It makes me more accurate. If you don't have a hoop, you could make a little chalk circle or you could just roll some tea towels up and, and make yourself a, a, a hoop out of those. I've got a couple of, of balls here. One is a tennis ball. If you don't have a tennis ball, any kind of play ball or even a football would do. Tennis requires you to move to and from a bouncing ball. So first of all, we have to be able to throw and catch from a static position. So using your hoop or your chalk circle for accuracy, drop the ball and catch it with two hands. Then drop and catch using your right hand, then drop and catch using your left hand. Get rid of the hoop and put the ball in your right hand and drop it just in front of your right foot. Now move to the side to catch it in two hands in front of your left foot and then drop and catch using your left hand and your left foot. This is a sandwich trap. We're trapping the ball between the racket and the hands. 
is a kind of halfway point between throwing and catching the ball with our hands and hitting the ball over the net. And it looks like this. I'm going to drop the ball in the hoop and I'm going to make a sandwich trap. I'm going to do that a few times until I get comfortable with that. And then I'm going to cross my arms over and drop the ball on the other side and trap it with the opposite side of the racket. That's a little bit like a backhand. Then I'm going to drop the ball and catch in a sandwich trap again. And I'm going to build into a progressive rally. That basically means keep the ball going. So we've started with a rally of one. That's drop, sandwich trap. Now I'm going to drop, bump it down with my racket, then sandwich trap, that's a rally of two. Drop, bump it down, bump it down again, that's a rally of three, and so on. So you're ready to play your first tennis competition. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, so set your stopwatch for 30 seconds and see what number you can get up to. And this is what you do. You start with one, then you add, go to two, then three, then four, then five, and so on. How many can you get to in 30 seconds? So it's one, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so on. My tips are keep your elbow in, keep the racket flat like a tray, and keep the ball as low as you can. If you can beat 16, I will eat my tennis cap. Good luck. So we've practiced everything statically in a very small space, and now we're going to add a little bit of movement. We're going to work little half circles around the hoop and back again because if we go a full circle we'll get dizzy. So now that we have learned some of the skills that you need to be able to play tennis and you've started to be very good at controlling the ball and controlling the racket and controlling your hands, let's see if you can finish off with a little tennis competition. Here it is. You have to place the racket on your fingertips or the palm of your hands and you have to try and keep it upright for as long as you can. So set your stopwatch. Pop the racket on your fingertips and see how long you can keep it up. And the minute that it hits the ground is the minute your time's up. You can move around as much as you like. And my tips are you keep the head of the racket, that's the bit with the strings in it, right in front of your face and that will help you to stay balanced. Go do it. <laughs>